Big snows falling across the Pacific Northwest. Some of that starts to move east. We've got some tornadoes in the forecast late tonight into early tomorrow morning. And where is this storm headed and what's it going to bring for the rest of the country? Well, that's what we're going to explore in today's video. Thanks, guys, for stopping by. I'm Travis Roberts. I'm in my hoodie today. It's a little chilly where I am. I'm a former TV chief meteorologist. If you're new to the channel and what I like about doing things here on YouTube, I can wear whatever I want. And uh, anyway... Thank you guys for subscribing. We just rolled through 10,000 subscribers on this fairly new channel for me. So thank you very much. And if you want to subscribe, I hope you will. All right, let's go right to what's going on. A few showers going through the Great Lakes with some clouds. There's that atmospheric river just pounding the Pacific Northwest. That's going to continue as we see our next system diving in. Now, I want to talk about why sometimes folks come on the channel and they say, what's changed? Why is it changing? What What's the deal with the models? Well, let me tell you something. The storm that we're watching that might bring some snow, and I say might, to parts of the east is still back here. And most of that energy is still out across the ocean. Across the ocean, we have no way to sample what's going on in the atmosphere. We're starting to sample this area of wind and uh, this upper low here across the far southwest. In fact, if you look at where the sounding data comes from, that's where we measure the atmosphere every day, twice a day, National Weather Service at these sites send up weather balloons. They measure from the ground all the way to the top of the atmosphere. And as they go up, they measure wind speed, they measure temperature, dew point, all the critical things that you want to know about to be able to plug into the models. Notice what's not off the coast. We don't sample what's out here. And look at all the areas that we miss. And this is a larger forecasting question. Think about all these spaces where we're not sampling the atmosphere. We're only getting an idea of what's going on in these specific spots, plugging that into computer models, and they're modeling out what they think is going to happen based on what's happening at all these sites, ground data, all of those things. Because what happens here at the surface is just part of what's going on. And I do want to point something out. This is the balloon data from San Diego this morning. Notice we're starting here at the surface, and what happens is the weather balloon goes up into the atmosphere. There's your temperature being measured as it goes up, and it's measuring the dew point. All of this data, again, getting plugged into the models. And on the right side, you have your wind speed. Notice here in the lower levels, winds are fairly calm. But once you get into the upper levels, especially here at about 300 millibars up to 200 millibars, so you're getting over what here, 8, 9, 10 kilometers. You're pretty high up into the atmosphere. Wind speeds are going at about 100 knots or better. And notice these winds here are just screaming out of the north. And we are absolutely seeing that here on the uh, on the upper level chart. As that dives in from the north, boom, there's your jet streak swinging through. This is likely going to round this upper low, and that's going to kick our severe weather off as we head into the overnight for Texas. And it's also going to be the storm that starts to wrap up across the central United States as we head through the week. So we're sampling that now with those weather balloons and plugging that into the weather model. So confidence is growing a little bit more in this area. And it's why the Storm Prediction Center has issued uh, at least through tonight into tomorrow a pretty decent risk of some tornadoes here across west and central Texas up into Oklahoma. And this would likely be an overnight to early morning tornado event. That continues tomorrow. It moves to the east as our storm pushes off to the east. Take a look at our future radar. You can see as we move through today, showers picking up across Texas. And then once we move into the overnight hours, late tonight, that's when your severe weather risk hits as that strong upper level jet streak moves through. Those fast moving winds, our wind shear starts to increase. We've got a lot of Gulf moisture moving in and change of wind direction with height. We could even get a squall line with some strong damaging winds, and then that pushes off to the east, and a large shield of rain moves north, and that could also lead to some snow as we move through the week. I do want to look at the upper pattern, though, because, again, I talked about that storm that's off the Pacific Northwest. A piece of that's going to break off. Again, remember, we're not sampling this yet, so that's one reason I want to keep looking at this as we head into tomorrow and the next day, because by by Tuesday, this thing is over land. We're getting a good sample of what's going on here. So for those of you in the east, at this point, we're starting to get a better idea of what's going to happen. The models have a, well, an incredibly hard time, really, with these upper lows because of things like that jet streak that I showed you, because the stronger that jet streak, usually the further south these upper lows try to dig, not being able to sample exactly what's going on out here across the ocean just yet, it makes it incredibly difficult to find out where this is going. But if you're to believe this, this puts the upper low somewhere just west of Lake Michigan as we head into Wednesday. What happens beyond that? Well, I think there's still a lot of question, so stay tuned. There's your surface low pressure developing as that strong jet streak kicks out of the four corner states. 
low pressure deepening, and it actually starts to weaken a little bit as it moves north. Some cold air on the backside of this likely will bring some snow to parts of Montana, North Dakota. I don't know that it gets into South Dakota. This looks more like a North Dakota snow event at this point for sometime Tuesday. And this is a pretty decent area of snow too for the Canadian prairies. Now we're pushing the snow up into Saskatchewan and Manitoba. And out ahead of this, a lot of warm air moving north and the rain showers move off to the east. Now behind this, we're starting to wrap in some cold air. That will move in by the time we move into Wednesday. So temperatures dropping behind this. What we don't see, though, would be a strong Arctic connection. This upper low is going to cut off from the main flow, if you will, and then meander to the south. Underneath that, there would likely be some snow. While we continue our atmospheric river across the west and push rain and snow into the Pacific Northwest with snow levels coming up, which could bring a flooding threat. We'll look at that in just a moment. That cold pool of air again moving off to the east. Some rain and snow here. Does it get cold enough for snow? I think that's still the question at this point. And then as we move into next weekend, again, remember where I, what I told you, the models are looking at, well, they're, they're really interpolating what's going on out in the ocean and trying to figure out what's going to happen. So that's why your modeling really isn't worth much past about seven days. But the idea, I think, is there that we have a pretty active storm path across the country. Just for kicks, this is the GFS showing that area of low pressure moving north into Canada, dropping some snow here. So we would start to build that snowpack here. Not a lot of cold weather for this part of the world lately, at least precipitation and cold. So not a lot of snow falling across southern Canada, but we will likely see some at least uh, up into the prairies. And then as we move into Wednesday and Thursday, this is where things get interesting on the GFS, and I would argue it looks a lot different. Surface low pressure trying to develop off the east coast as our upper low does this. Again, do we have a jet streak that's strong enough here? Does our trough dig enough? Do we see surface low pressure develop here? All those questions still need to be answered, but this has been pretty consistent. This snow here on the west side of this uh, system, wherever that would be, and also the southwest side of it, north where, where there's not a lot of cold air. Again, this is your coldest air aloft, maybe some rain showers. And then snow into the mountains look likely here from Pennsylvania down into West Virginia. If anything, I'm feeling more confident about that. And do we see an area of low pressure develop across the Northeast? If so, this could bring some snow to interior areas of the Northeast into upstate New York, Western New York, maybe Vermont and New Hampshire. I don't think it gets cold enough down into the big cities for snow. Western Mass might see some snow up into Vermont. Let's wait and see where this goes. If you take the GFS out further than that, it stays active with more storms just parading across the country. It's that time of year when things get active and you start to see a lot of mid-latitude cyclones. So it wouldn't shock me as our storm track pushes south if we see more of these in the coming days. So that's a lot to look at. I know we've kind of really dug into that. Let's look out west where that snow is going to really pound and continue to pile up in the order of feet. We've got one storm and then another storm moves in by Thursday. Look at these snow totals. Over four feet in some areas from Northern California up into the mountains of Oregon and Washington. Even parts of Idaho and Montana into the mountains will see well over a foot, in some cases two feet of snow. And then looking at the precipitation across the central plains, there goes the rain and there's that snow trying to form across the northern plains as we head into Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. Again, it mostly looks like a North Dakota event with some snow starting to spill east over into Minnesota as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. Snow totals in this region could exceed two, three, four inches. And I don't know, some of the spots may actually see closer to four to eight inches. These are modeled snow numbers. So keep in mind, the ground's pretty warm here too. So we may not end up getting this much. And if we push this out to the east, again, there's the European that would show some of that snow here in the interior areas in the mountains with lighter amounts back here. If you remember a couple of days ago, the GFS was trying to just show a tremendous amount of snow. This is the GFS a little bit closer. It is a colder solution and it usually is with these types of setups. So this doesn't shock me. But just for kicks, this is the 6Z run, which technically doesn't use weather balloon data, at least a lot. So this would be last night's 12Z run. And if you go back to yesterday's 18Z run, it was a little colder. So the trend has actually been over the last couple of runs to get a little bit warmer with this system. But it's also trying to put some heavier snow into parts of the Northeast. We'll watch it. It's science, right? It's not exact. And hey, look, I'm just doing the best I can with what I've got. Now, not a lot of confidence is there. I mean, there's confidence that grows, and that's why you start to see things like 
tornado outlooks going up across the central plains as that confidence grows. And I know this is a U.S.-based weather channel, but look how cold it is across Europe. Over the next couple of days, look at this, there is going to be a tremendous amount of snow falling in this part of the world with those temperatures pretty cold. All right, that's all I got. See you next time.